Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my DIY solar systems. Yes, plural, <laughs> I have two different systems here. A lot of you guys have been asking about this because you see these solar panels in the background in all of my videos. So today I'm gonna to talk about my solar system. So first off, you could probably see those solar panels up there on my roof. That was the initial system. That is a 10 kilowatt system. It was also a DIY system, but I hired some people to help me. I hired an electrician for all the work that's in the garage with the breaker panels. But the second system that I'm gonna show you today was totally me on my own. I'm not gonna cover the roof mount system in this video because I've already done that a ton. I'll have links in the description below so you guys can go back and watch those videos. One crazy thing that I tried doing, uh, I think it was yeah, about a year ago, I tried living off the grid for an entire year. I have a whole playlist about it. I was reporting in every month. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out. The 10 kilowatts just wasn't enough for our needs. It wasn't enough to run the house and power two electric vehicles that we had at the time. So it was a fail, but definitely go back and watch those videos. You can learn from it. I definitely did. And I realized quickly that I needed a bigger system. But before I cover the brand new system, I'll at least come over here and show you guys what I have now for the existing setup. The tall inverter right there is my on-grid or off-grid Princeton power inverter. Very rare, it was very hard to find an inverter that was a hybrid inverter that would be on-grid, off-grid, and use battery power. So that was really hard to find. I bought it from a local company that was closing. And then in my black box that I have right here, that is a battery pack from a Toyota RAV4 EV. That's about 40 kilowatt hours. Then in my T-Rex camper right here, that has a Tesla Model S battery in the bottom of it. It was an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack, but usables somewhere around 77 probably. I've actually never tested my full capacity. So I have quite a bit of storage, but you need sunlight to fill these battery packs. And in the winter time here in upstate New York, it is mostly gray. You can see how it is right now. This is midday on a typical December day, and it is just gray, unfortunately. So even though I have all this battery storage, having the 10 kilowatts on the roof just was not good enough. And then also, if you go back and watch those videos, you'll see that I quickly learned that if you're gonna to try to be off grid, having roof mounted solar panels is the dumbest thing you could do because you can't brush them off. So I learned that it's very difficult to be off grid in the winter here in upstate New York. So I needed more solar. And that's where my new system comes into place. So the smaller inverter that you can see there on the wall, that is an on grid Sunny Boy inverter. That one's 7,000 watts. And that is connected to Canadian solar panels that are over here. These are 330 watt solar panels. I picked these up off Craigslist, got a smoking deal. In total, this is 9,900 watts of solar panels. I did a lot of research when designing this system and I decided to overload the inverter, which is something you can do. A lot of people get scared, they think you can't do it, but I designed a bigger system so that I could have more peak output. On the best, sunniest of days, I can get about 7,100 watts out of my inverter. So on perfect days, I'm not getting quite as much as these solar panels can deliver, but we really have days that are just absolutely perfect with just tons of sun and tons of solar power. But even though I'm not able to take advantage of the peak sun, it is still gonna increase the average output that I get from these. So even if the sun's a little bit lower, I still can get pretty close to 7,000 watts through the inverter. I finished up this whole installation in July and between July and when winter started, uh, somewhere around December, I had built up a 1500 kilowatt hour credit with NYSEG, who's our local provider. And I was hoping that was gonna get us through the winter. I didn't know this was our first winter with this extra solar system. Unfortunately, here we are in mid January, and now I'm at a 1500 kilowatt hour deficit. So even this extra system wasn't able to keep up with our energy needs. But now that the system is done, and I'll be starting to build a solar credit from spring as soon as it really starts getting sunny again, I'm hoping that credit that I can build up all summer long will maybe get us through the winter. Otherwise, I'll have to go bigger yet again 
but we'll see. <laughs> the time will tell. All in all though, this system was so, so cheap and I didn't have to use any credits or any special discounts from the government or anything. I built this entire system, including all the wiring, the solar panels, the inverter, everything for $5,215. I even included the gas that it took for me to go drive and pick up these solar panels and the inverter. The inverter was in New Jersey. It was like five hour drive each way. And the solar panels unfortunately required two trips to Pennsylvania. And that's where we're gonna continue. And the rest of this video is my installation of this whole system. And we're gonna start with my trip down to Pennsylvania to pick up these solar panels. This might be kind of boring to some of you guys, but if you're into solar, if you're into this kind of stuff, I think you'll like it. But thanks a lot for watching, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And I just picked up my father-in-law's truck, so heading down there tomorrow. This really sucks, but I'm gonna have to make two trips. This is too much weight. I had to take off the trailer because there was too much weight on the truck. So, yeah, this really sucks. Well, first off, there are some of my panels. I have some already laying out here. I have the conduit ran, mostly. So I got it all the way up here, under the gravel, up that way, around the corner, and over to the inverter that's right over there. And I'm not the greatest at running wires. Uh, my wife is going to come out here and help. She's going to push these. I have a snake ran all the way through this, and I'm hoping with her pushing, and with me pulling up there that I'll be able to get it through and then I'll just piece on the eight, 10 footers, whatever they are, and then I'll run it up to that. But I also wanted to show you all the stuff I have going on over here. You can kind of see these posts sticking up. Those are my wires for the solar panels. There's gonna be three rows, as you can kind of tell right here. So I have a positive or negative sticking up through those posts. And then on this one over here, I have a ground wire coming out. I'm actually kind of thinking I might just do a wood rack system because this is kind of a cheap DIY system and I didn't want to spend another two, three thousand dollars in racking. So yeah, I'm thinking pressure treated wood, but we'll get to that. But either way, I ran an extra ground wire over here. So I have three wires coming up here, one's a ground. These are the wires coming from the solar panels. I have them all labeled. These are all the different ones for the positive. You can see the negative right here. And then this one right here is the ground that goes through here over to that pipe there. And then under here, I rented a trencher that was badass. The trencher just did quick work of all of this. It was very nice. So you got a T right there. And then over here, I've got a 90. And what I did is I have one short lead, obviously labeled positive, and then negative is long. It goes all the way out there because these panels, next to each other one after another is going to be i believe i saw 40 feet so that should give me plenty length to take the negative all the way to the end i have mc4 connectors so i can splice the mc4 connector at the end down here i can splice one of the short lead here it's all going to be quite easy so my wife is putting our son down to sleep because it's probably about 7 30 and when she's done she's going to come out here and hopefully help me get these wires through and tomorrow what i'm planning is removing all of these panels again, taking them all out. I have a mound of dirt under there and I wanna do some leveling out here because it does kind of dip down a little bit. So I wanna try to smooth that out. Yes, I should have done that first, but I was eager to get started and get rolling on the solar system. But yeah, tomorrow I'll get the tractor out and uh, try to move some dirt and maybe smooth that out a little bit. My wife just helped and it went so smooth. I can't believe it pulled and it came right out no problem at all very excited so that means i can probably get this all wired up and the conduit done tonight we're losing some sunlight but i'm pretty sure i can get it all done tonight and that means tomorrow groundwork and maybe connecting the solar panels tomorrow <laughs> very cool hey guys uh, another day here making some good progress but i put a lot of topsoil right there just to smooth everything out to level it out next i'm gonna use the box blade to uh, smooth it out a little bit more. And then when I'm getting closer to done, I've got a really big roller that I'm gonna try to roll it flat. So that's what's going on today. And now I'm gonna get on the tractor and continue doing a little more work. 
So here we are. It's as flat as I could get it. Unfortunately, it's not perfect. I really wish I could have gone a little flatter, but it'll have to do. I've got the first array right here ready. These are 10 panels and these are the 72 cells. So they're big. They're like 66 inches tall, something like that. But I've got them all in a line. I've got them all series connected. And right now I'm making the connections here. This is the positive connection and that's the negative connection going to the other side over there. And I'm gonna get one array up and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully everything works. Hey guys, so I have one string connected. I'm about to flip this on for the very first time. You can see the one string there behind me on the ground. It's all connected, fuse is in. Sorry, I'm sweaty like crazy. It's 105 with the heat index right now, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm about to switch it on. See what happens, nothing. I knew it wasn't gonna be smooth. All right, I guess I'll put the camera down and I'll dive into this and see what's going on. All right, it was my bad. The MC4 connector that I crimped for the positive side, I didn't screw it in all the way. I actually didn't screw the negative side in all the way. I'll show you that, but that did it. That got me voltage. 399 volts here uh, has a disturbance, FAC BFR. I'm hoping that's just because the grid switch isn't on. Let's go flip it on and see what happens. Cross your fingers. Let's see. Mode disturbance. Oh, I think it might be working. Okay, 397 volts, but PAC, it says zero watts. I'm hoping I don't have to program this thing. Mode waiting, okay. Okay, so it has level one, level two voltage. Well, I was just here reading the manual and I heard a click. So I come over here to check it out and it just took a little time. It was probably four, five minutes, something like that. And then this thing turned on and it started working. So right now it says 710 watts. I did just see 1800 watts. I don't have the panels angled right now and it's about 4 p.m. So I don't know how much I'm actually gonna get from these at the moment, but it is working. It is recognizing the grid voltage, which I mentioned earlier. So yes, it is working. My DIY system is up and running. I've got a lot more to come. I'm gonna have to build racking for this system. I'm gonna do it all out of wood. It's gonna be another 600 bucks or so. All that stuff is gonna be a lot of work too. Well, there it is, guys. This was a very, very fun project. I really appreciate you guys watching. And again, if this interests you, please check out the links in the description below. I have a bunch of stuff that I did with my solar system here in my house. I don't talk about it too much because I've just been so enamored with my RAV4 Prime, but definitely go back and check out those. I try to format a lot of this stuff so it can teach you guys on what to do and how to do it. But if you have any questions at all on how to do something, post it below. I usually respond to most messages as long as I have time. But yeah, post it below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. I got some free labor. He's helping me wash the solar panels. You got a long way to go there, little buddy. Okay, you have to get all of them though, not just one. There you go. This might take a while. Okay, we're giving up on the solar panels. The weeds definitely do not need water. Oh well, I guess I'll have to clean the panels myself tomorrow. Rah!